Greetings and welcome to episode 165 of the Words About Games cast, a weekly video game podcast for wordsaboutgames.net. I am your host, Keith Robinson, and I'm joined this week by Amy Alexander. That does not sound quite right. <laughs> There's something wrong with that intro, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Oh, wait, I can see the labels on the bottom of the oops. I got us the wrong way around. <laughs> oh well <laughs> how's it going Keith yeah um, I mean I'm just wondering how many episodes of the World about Game Cast that's going fine or has it not been going fine and we've only just not in my <laughs> way I mean I'm, I'm not fine I'm, I'm never fine I'm it's amazing still, is it, I was going to say it's still too warm no now, last weekend was a one-off. This weekend, it's fine. It's livable. I can live with this. It's not raining. It's not cold, but it's not boiling the seas. So everything's <laughs> fine as far as the temperature goes. I guess it just wouldn't. This just wouldn't be a British podcast with two British co-hosts without us talking about the weather, would it? Yeah. That's just how things go, I guess. Anyway, for the people who don't know what the Words About Games cast is, like Keith here, it's over there, we discuss five stories. Nah! <laughs> 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 I couldn't remember which way it was. We discuss five stories centered around what's going on in, in video games, the industry, the gaming culture. Keith's totally throwing me off. It's a good job I wrote this down. And all that other stuff over the past seven days. Before we leave you with a list of games coming out this week. This week. We discuss the developers of Mordhau making complete hits of themselves. G2A. Trying to one-up them and making complete hits of themselves. Blizzard posting job listings for the community managers they fired a few months ago. A pair of Epic Games store stories. And EA struggling with their image as the bad guys of the industry. Oh, bless them. There are timestamps below in the description below the video on YouTube. If you want to watch this podcast in any order that you particularly choose, you could do so. You just go down, click the number, or fast forward with your finger if you're on a phone, and you're good to go. This week's news is a bit of a mess. Like, it's a. It, the, the subtitle to the episode. This week's news is a bit of a mess. We're not just talking about ourselves there, people. We're talking just, about the actual news. I played the do you think the simulation is breaking down joke too early, as it turns out, <laughs> as far as this week's news stories goes, but it's because of all the different replies and people like throwing shade at one another and everybody responding to everybody else. It's like oh, the first two news stories especially are just a total fucking mess. I have a feeling that a lot of PR managers are going on holiday with their kids. <laughs> a lot of PR managers have just been reading Twitter this week and just been like... It's just like, it's like, no, no, Terry, put your phone away. This is family time. And then, like, tomorrow when they come back to work, it's just going to be like, Steve, get in here. We need, <laughs> we need to revoke, we need to revoke your Twitter access for all. <laughs> Like, this week could, would have gone better. If the building had have burned down, <laughs> like in some of these cases, like if the building had burned down, we would have had a better week than the week that we just had. So yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Do you know what's awesome though, Keith? You're awesome. Oh. You're breathtaking. My new, yeah, no. my new favorite gif. Anyway, let's do this thing. Story number one is actually like three parts, I believe. And it is titled. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you just clicked on the thing. You just yeah. clicked on the thing, and I saw your name flash up because you, it's on Google Docs, and you're an anonymous Dumbo octopus. <laughs> That's what it said. Click somewhere else in the headline a sec. It's literally what it says: anonymous Dumbo octopus. I was already at launch anyway there and then I just 
that's I've just flashed up on my screen. So Amy tries to recover her, you know. <laughs> okay. Tumpo, yeah, which has been lacking in this podcast so far. I suggest everyone goes out there and Google image a Dumbo up, which I believe is a thing. Cause I think they're the ones with the sort of fins on the side of them. A I'm bit gonna, like. I'm gonna tweet uh, it. Yeah, you later. I'm gonna tweet that you later. Okay. New serious news podcast. Like one of these weeks. I have titled this section Mordow had a fairly disastrous PR week. You ever played Mordow, Keith? No. No, neither have I. And it's a good job I stayed away. Part one Rampant racism and toxicity are driving players away from Mordow. This is from Samuel Horty over at PCGamer.com with a headline that you just love to read. Who writes Nobody expected Mordow to get this big, especially not the first time developers who made it. What started as a janky fan project made for the competitive chivalry medieval warfare community has become one of the best multiplayer hack and slashes on PC, and it's sold more than a million copies. But for some players, Mordhau's fun combat has been tainted by a growing toxicity problem that sees racist, sexist, and homophobic slurs thrown around in both the in-game chat and the official forums seemingly without repercussions. As an example, one of the forum's most popular threads is titled Post Your... No, (laughs) not reading that in which players share images of their character builds. The thread started in 2017 when Mordhau was in alpha and has attracted more than 2,600 comments since. One of these comments says, Step up my... Nope. Another says, Listen here. Nah. One player questions the racism in the thread's title. Another responds, You are gay. (laughs) I'm just thinking how difficult it is for people to get a a hint of how bad this is giving you not reading out the word. So I'm just okay. going to just, post your just going words. To, yeah, it's basically they have tried to um, pun the um, the seventeenth, eighteenth century word for black person um, by putting the K at the beginning of it because obviously when you do the K N things like for night, it's it's a medieval game. It's not a f- very funny joke. It's a terrible. It's not a joke. It's... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say it's a terrible joke, it and then it's a terrible like, pun. It's not yeah. a joke. Um, but the, this is where the like the controversy around the the put like the Fred's title is because on pretty much anything run by a AAA developer, like EA or anything, this would have come down within about ten hours. I would imagine it would have been if, on For Honor. This wouldn't have been up for very long. This, this post. This would have come down faster than they took out the loot boxes from Battlefront Two. Anyway, let's make it continue. The Mordhau devs... We're not going to talk about loot boxes, so I had to get it in there somewhere. Yeah. The Mordhau devs don't have a problem with it, or its contents. Quote, It is one of our longest and oldest threads, as well as among the most active threads on our forum, full of creative loadouts from our community, says Andrew Geach, speaking on behalf of the team. As for the title itself, we as a team don't find it racist or offensive. And considering... So, <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah, basically... All I can hear is, is like when I read this like thing is basically Mordhau, proud of racism since 2017. Ding. <laughs> and considering the thread's content, we find it even less so. Considering the thread's content. You know all those words I didn't want to read? <laughs> They're totally fine with all of that. We do understand, however, that some people may interpret it as being racist or inappropriate if taken out of context. Yep, if taken out of context. Okay, here we go. We white people just can't have anything to ourselves, can we? The user in question posted recently. (laughs) Now we can't even play our fucking video games in peace without some nog like yourself screaming bloody murder over the lack of n-words. The user's account is still active, and if you spend five minutes on the forums, you'll find many like them. This is not just about a lack of resources. The developers are currently unwilling to take a hard stance against any toxicity, In a recent update, they added the option to mute players by clicking on them in chat, but in an interview before that update, they told me they don't want to add any sort of word filter, partly because people might claim we're censoring. We want to put the power in the players' hands, said Mike Desrosiers. Desrosiers? 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 An artist who worked on the new mute function. An artist who worked on the mute. Small dev team? <laughs> yeah, okay. If we take an official stance and we put an official filter list on all the words in chat, people will first find a way around it 
and it might catch innocent words, or people might claim we're censoring, so we'd rather put the power in the player's hands. Oh, but wait, it gets better. <laughs> Sorry, you were going to say? I was going to say, if you're despairing at this point, at uh, how like, the, like, the internet is going, how games are going and everything, do go back to our last podcast where we, I believe we covered Microsoft and its ideas on yes. how to make everything a safer environment. It's well, not all bad, people. It's not all bad. you got to remember, this game's primary platform, its only platform, is Steam. And there's a reason we don't like Steam. <laughs> and this is one of those reasons. Not the game itself, I mean the attitudes Ow. that you find prevalent on Steam think. forums. Don't blame Steam for no, these people. No. Having like th well, their own boards, which are horrible. Steam well, has horrible boards and stuff because they don't moderate it at all. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Well, we'll probably talk about. But it's like there's a yeah. there's a parallel to be drawn in terms of forum moderation. Anyway, yeah, it gets better with plans for playable female characters and a choice of ethnicity on the horizon. You can only create white male characters at the moment. I expect the vitriol to get worse. You're not wrong. The Mod How team seem to expect that too, and say their current plan is to let players disable these new options. <laughs> what? I haven't read this out loud, and I don't know. I don't know. Quote, that goes back to a similar situation as the chat filters, Des Rogers says. Whatever stance we take officially, some group of people are going to be upset with us, and so ideally we'd put the power in the players' hands and give them the option to enable and disable different things. Remember that quote for later, everybody. <laughs> There has been an endless there has been endless debates about it and it attracts a lot of toxicity. A lot of stuff we're not interested in attracting to the game itself. Any more on top of what's already present. But we're always looking to expand our customization. Geach says that if it, the team add a Middle Eastern person, or a female, or a black person, they'd do it properly. Quote, we'd put the real work into it, not just a band-aid to appease people. We'd dedicate artist time to new scalps new texturing, it might come along with a larger content patch, so it's not just you hunt in, end quote. <laughs> Hang on. I did get this from PC Gamer, not The Onion. Geach says giving players the option to disable characters that aren't white and male is not set in stone and depends how our community is in the future. So that's a break point before we, we yeah, I know, go through I know. the reaction to this. Do you want to break this down? <laughs> okay. I have to get interject at that point for it's just like, what? I have, I, I, these are words that came out of human people's mouths and... Yeah. Um, wow. So they basically acknowledged that the people, <coughs> like a large part of their player base is um, what would be considered in more polite their circle racist in the ex racist and sexist in the extreme um okay. i mean the examples are right there in the story i read them out yeah um i mean racism racism homophobia sexism racism racism we're fine with yeah. this <laughs> that was how this it went it was like here's the examples yeah. and then them saying we're fine with this stuff uh, what <laughs> really yeah. What I mean, I do remember on Twitter um, when this sort of blown up, uh, us and uh, Patrick having a discussion about um, the medieval period and why people kept going, like, a specific section of people kept going, like, to that game, like, like genre. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we all know that women and black people weren't invented until the mid-1900s, so, you know. You got well, aeroplanes were actually. around in the War of Independence. <laughs> Yes, I read the airport thing. Yeah, um, no, it's like, I, I really don't get some of this stuff, but... I mean, they basically took their own grave with the first part of the of their response to the whole thing of like, hey, this thread exists in your forum. And they were like, we're fine with it. Yeah. And then everything else is just them digging them to know deeper. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm used to people like saying, oh, we'll introduce female characters or whatever, like properly in the game. And what I would normally expect from this sort of thing is like, oh, we're not going to do boob armor or anything. There, there won't be like, there will be proper armor sets and stuff. Or if we introduce like, say, Saracens and stuff, they'll be wearing proper Saracens and stuff. It just won't be a black person in a, um, 
like French uniform. Although, as I mean, as it goes to Patrick, it's like a lot of the like Chimera area and stuff was around the Mediterranean, so they wouldn't have been the white you see in the pictures. <laughs> like, yeah, French um... people are like Western European, but that doesn't mean that they're the pale ass white you get in like, the well, United Kingdom. Yeah, France goes all the way down. Like, right. yes, it's a Mediterranean <laughs> country. And then they're like, oh, Spain, also one of the chivalric countries. That's yeah, even further yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, dark, darker skin tones. You get darker skin tones the further south you go because, you know, the equator and the sun and exposure yeah. and skin pigmentation. Like, I don't know very much about science yeah. and history, but, like, that's the basic, most yeah. basic of basic. I mean, I'm right, right? Like, tell me I'm right now that I've just launched into that rant. <laughs> Uh, okay, yes, um, big, it can, uh, skin pigmentation is a reaction uh, evolutionary to um, absorb vitamin D and like harmful rays from the sun, which is why like, when black people move from Africa to like northern climes like Scandinavia and stuff, they have to take vitamin D supplements, otherwise they'll develop rickets okay. for medical conditions. And that's the thing that I learned today. I mean... <laughs> Great race, they're racist as, as fuck. That just, yeah. That's how it is. And they did a terrible yeah. job. They didn't even bother trying to hide it. I was like, they did a terrible job trying to hide it. I mean, they didn't really try. Yeah. I mean, it didn't scream historic accuracy at any point in their statement. So we can't, like, hold it up on that, man. But it's like, without saying historic accuracy, they're basically just saying members of our, like, community don't want to see people who don't look like them. So we're going to give them the option of removing people who don't look like them from the game. Yeah. Like, or reskinning them, whitewashing them. Yeah. Whitewashing them, that's the correct term we're looking for. Whitewashing. I mean, that's what they yeah. do, right? Like, you turn the toggle. And before we get into it, I'll just say, like, spoiler alert, there's a whole thing about the toggle. And it's probably yeah. not happening, but, you know, you would just turn the toggle on and off. It definitely was going to happen at some point, regardless of what anybody's about to say. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing about, oh, we don't want to put a word filter in because people might claim we're censoring. At that point... In mm -hmm. their thinking, in this article, in the interview, all they're doing is appealing to a certain demographic of gamer. Mm -hmm. When they use the words censoring, it's like, okay, so you're basically, you're trying to get the message out that this place is a cool place for all of you racist, bigoted, homophobic, sexist dickheads to hang out. So, think about censoring on, like, yeah, it's like, okay, yes. If you're not going to go, if you say you're not going to censor, you're not going to censor. That's fine. that's a freedom of choice. Yeah, sure. that that's something that you want to do. Okay, but then you go on and then you say you're going to censor your own game for the player. Yeah. So that. <laughs> so like you can use any words you want, and you can like be a bigoted shithead, like to other people in the game. And that's totally fine, or on the forums, and that's totally fine. But we want to make sure that we, you can turn off the scary women's and people of color in our game because of realism. And at this point, I want to say that because of the way that I use Twitter, one of the promoted tweets I get a lot is from Twitter Gaming. And Twitter yeah. Gaming does this thing where they, they constantly promote tweets that are clips from people's twitch streams and like they're like oh it's just like funny moments or whatever and there's a clip from Maud Howe that i've seen about 50 times at this point um and it's a dude taken on a knight with a frying pan and he's like blocking the sword attacks and then at the end he kills him by throwing the frying pan at him and it kills him a dude in full armor um guess what game that's from <laughs> it's from Maud Howe. <laughs> Realism and historical accuracy. Yep, 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 yep. Also, the thing about, oh, if we were going to put women or all stuff in our game, we'd make sure we do it properly. We'd, and the one thing he says, there'd be, we'd make sure that we dedicate time to make sure there are new scalps. That's the one thing. The scalps are the wow. most important part of... My brain's melting. See, this, this has got me. When you think about like a knight's game, they're going to be all wearing big heavy armor and tabards. It's about only thing you can see is the face. And if they don't wear a helmet, the head or lack thereof. So the, the, the head is going to be all of the characterization that you're going to get. 
animations. Just just throwing that out there. Maybe slightly more important than some new scalps. Mention the new scalps, but not the no, not that's not your lead, right? That would be my that would be like me leading this entire podcast with the EA story, which we're just gonna spend like two or three minutes laughing about at the end of the podcast. Anyway. Barry in the lead. Yeah, Barry in the lead. Part two. So <laughs> there's about another six or seven fucking news stories. Like leading on after this as you might expect what i did was i found someone who summarized with a bunch yeah. of updates and what i did yeah. was I, I i did i always find it really annoying when i look at an article and i'm not having to go at luke plunkett um from Kentucky. what i'm having to go at is I, I really dislike reading an article and before i get to the article there's like seven or eight updates no this is cut <laughs> like um pc gamer do that where they put the updates ahead of the thing and then you the original stories below this article actually had the whole thing at the top and then the updates were underneath but because i already had the original pc gamer article i just deleted the top bit right um <laughs> yeah because i read your cliff notes because <laughs> so it's just, just like, you'll see it's, it's just all updates yeah. and the, the reason i chose luke plunkett's Kotaku article is because of the title which is mod house developers are on some bullshit. This is from Luke Plunkett over at Kotaku, who wrote a bunch of stuff and then updated the post like six times, five times? Yep, five times. So after all of that happened with PC Gamer, the first update was very quick. While Tritanion had been considering a toggle for female player models, they now deny the same was ever intended for models of different skin colours. Quote, Whatever stance we take officially, some group of people are going to be upset with us. Artists, oh, yep, we know that. He told us. And so ideally, we'd put the power in the player's hands and give them the option to enable and disable different things. The player's choice line is also used to explain why the game's chat filtering system is so rudimentary, with Des Rosier saying all that stuff we said about putting yeah. the power in the player's hands. So they've already, they've already denied the one thing. Like, oh, we, we're going to totally put a toggle in for female characters. <laughs> Women can't be knights. But we totally, <coughs> we totally didn't mean... We totally, like, didn't mean, like, we were going to have a toggle for people of colour because we're not racist. Anyway. We know what we should have done. Go on. We should have made sure Patrick was on this one because when I just coughed there, he could have coughed for about half an hour. Because he's actually still in the medieval era, where I was like, medieval era is too recent. <laughs> I want to go back further. Yeah. Fair play. Anyway, update two. This was 10.29pm the same day. Just... There's a lot of crashing suddenly happened. My apologies, everybody listening to this. Despite what was said in the PC Gamer interview, Tritanion have since tweeted, quote, Ahem. We at Tritanion, and as a small indie team, have a lot to learn when it comes to dealing with toxicity slash racism in a large community. However, we need to clarify some claims posted in an article today. We do not, nor have we ever, had plans to hide other ethnicities or disable characters that are white in Mordhaun. Any claims to the contrary are false. Official statement coming soon. One hour later... <laughs> Just less than Sorry, one hour less later. Less than one hour later. In response to Tritanion's denial, PC Gamer have updated their original story with a transcript of the relevant section of the interview. Three hours later, <clears throat> here's a forum post from April. Sorry, I haven't got the forum post in the story, but basically there's a forum post from, from April in which Tritanion mentioned a possible toggle in relation to the introduction of female player models, saying... We might add a simple client-side toggle for both female and male characters, which would let you disable them because the, realis the, the realism complaint is valid. Again, frying pan. Ding. Dead. Realism. Uh, the next day, Tritanion issued a full statement denying that the possible toggle would ever have been for different skin colours and blaming the confusion on a misunderstanding during PC Gamer's interview. And that's just where we are. As far as the story goes, unless something's happened in the last few hours. I think Luke's got it right. The mod hard developers are on some bullshit. They've, 
They've somehow managed to stake out all positions possible. <laughs> <laughs> in the course that of like a is week. not neutrality, right? <laughs> Being neutral in an argument does not mean you take both sides. Well, they, they I took all sides. Don't take it. We're going to do I'm this thing. I'm true neutral. I'm all alignment. No. <laughs> Just had an idea for a great D&D character. They... <laughs> They were like, yes, this toggle is a thing we're going to do. Oh, no, it was just something we were thinking about. No, it was never going to be for, for people of color. And then PC Gamer were like, no, that's what you said. Here's the transcript because we're journalists and we have the full transcripts for interviews that lying yeah. around because, of course, we do. Why did you think yeah, you would it... get away with lying? <laughs> yeah, it's like, shit. How many interviewers nowadays just rely on pen and paper? They mostly get sit you down and they record what's said because it means that they're free to focus on what you're saying and what they're thinking, and also so they have evidence of what was said. Mm -hmm. Especially because there's been this whole weird fucking thing where you know there's a crusade against gaming and journalism. <laughs> People are like, they posted the transcript, so they posted the thing, and then try turning on. We're like, no, no, that's not what we said. And then people were like, yeah, you tell them to try turning on. And then Sam Samuel Hoy was like, here's the transcript. Which, you know, this is what they said. And then people were like, ah, you're lying. Post the audio. And then they didn't post the audio, obviously. Because if they had done, all that would have happened is, ah, you faked the audio. Post the video. We, I don't have video. Well, yeah, see? Fake news game journalism. Brap, brap, brap. It's a no-win situation, basically. Which is why they just, there's no point in them posting the audio for it. But anyway, that's like a insider baseball thing. Like, we would post the video, but that's because we work in a video realm. <laughs> that's what we would do, but they'd probably still somehow be fake, even if they did post a video of it. Um, how do you feel about Mordhau, a game you've never played or probably even heard of much about until the past week, Keith? Nah, yeah. it's not my stick. Was it, it wasn't anything I was interested in playing. Like, when it was blowing nah. up, I kind of looked at it, and then I was like, uh, I might give it a go. Farno was cool. Maybe Mordhau could be fun. And then, funnily enough, it was a couple of months ago, whenever it came out. Yeah. And funnily enough, I found in my research the april forum post that luke plunkett mentions where it was like oh we're gonna put these types of characters in and we're probably gonna put a toggle in and then i was like nope <laughs> nope i'm not gonna nope <laughs> not for me yeah the, to the toggle was an alarm bell in your head yeah and then like i'd never seen the the thread that was mentioned in the pc game article of the rampant racism or sexism but i'm not at the same time i'm not surprised be like by any of it because of like what I knew of the game from beforehand. And that sucks. Like, oh, this this game has a massively bigoted fan base. But I'm not surprised. They're being egged on by the developers and I'm not surprised. That's shit. <laughs> I'm not surprised by this fucking absolute horse shit. But I, why have we reached this point? <laughs> Well, developers have um, politics too, which is probably why the hashtag of this year has been our game is not political, despite it having fairly obvious messages. We're going to get into that, by the way, at some point on a future podcast because it came up again this week. Yeah, I know. With another why game. Not? And it, it just keeps coming up. And it's going to get, and I keep pushing it on site to do other stuff. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to have to just do a whole breakdown of the whole A play gold nonsense shit that companies are trying to spouse because it's very similar in a way to what the mod hard developers are doing when they're saying the cert those certain keywords in their interview yeah. uh, with PC Gamer to, a to, to appeal to a specific audience. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll get into that. <laughs> mod how, man. Mod how. But you know what else happened this week, Keith? Another company went <laughs> and saw, or probably saw all of this going off on Twitter. And they were like, they did the whole, it's the meme, right? They were like, huh, oh, did Mordhau just sits down just on the couch like, fuck, I've had a bad week. 
Mm-hmm. And then G2A went, hold my beer. <laughs> because they also had a fairly disastrous PR week. Part one. Developers call for players to pirate their games rather than buy from G2A. All of these stories that I'm about to read are by James Bachelor over at GamesIndustry.biz. He's done fantastic work all week on this story. And here we go. G2A is once again under fire. Oops. As developers are encouraging gamers to download their titles illegally rather than buy them from the divisive marketplace. The outcry began with a tweet from Mike Rose, founder of indie publisher Normal Robots, who observed that G2A has paid for sponsored ads on Google. Anyone searching for games such as Descenders, published by Rose's firm, will see G2A links first. Quote, we make zero money on our games if people buy through the ads, Rose tweeted, before adding that it is impossible for users to turn the ads off. Yeah. Please, if you're going to buy a game from G2A, just pirate it instead. Genuinely. Devs don't see a penny either way, so we're much rather... Yeah, that's what it says. We're much rather G2A didn't see money either, end quote. Descenders developer Rage Squid also backed up Rose, encouraging players to torrent their game instead of buying on G2A, as did Flambia's Rami Ismail. Quote, If you can't afford or don't want to buy our games full price, please pirate them rather than buying them from a key reseller, Ismail Ismail tweeted. These sites cost us so much potential dev time and customer service, investigating fake key requests, figuring out credit card chargebacks, and more. End quote. Keep going, or stop for a discussion. Because we've heard this one before. I think we've covered this before. This happened last year, I want to say. I mean, apart from the fact that the person who tweeted out, like, literally filmed the fact that you couldn't turn the ads. Yeah, literally, it was clicking the ads. (laughs) And G2A, I don't think I've added it in here. Part of G2A's response was, we we didn't do that because it's literally impossible. Like this video <laughs> of him trying to turn the ads off and he can't turn the ads off. Yeah, I mean, on that end, I'm sure that's going to be a Google thing because... Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, the, the, the reason it's bad, why that is a thing, I don't know if it's in here later on. If it is, I'll skip over it. The reason that's bad is because if you then search for Descenders which is like, I don't know, $24.99, let's say, right? But if you do a Google search and the first result that comes up is Descenders on G2A for like 14 quid, you're not going to buy it for $29.99 on Steam. You're going to buy it from G2A for much cheaper, which is shit. (laughs) Because, yeah, part two, G2A, quote, we want to finally stop the accusations. End quotes. This is the response. I think it came out about a day later. Gamesindustry.biz reached out to G2A for their response to what I just read above. Above, for earlier. This is a video, not an article. Hear me? Come on, get here in together. And the company... The resp- <laughs> and the company... The wheels are falling off. Ah! And the company responded with a lengthy breakdown of its business model, misunderstandings on how it operates, and what G2A is going to address these accusations that... Yeah. So what I did was there's there's a couple of important points I pulled out. They went in so much detail. Like it was almost like they were trying to confuse people reading the article. Uh, so I pulled out relevant parts. The company emphasized it's not you can read the full thing on gamesindustry.biz if you want. I highly recommend you do. The company emphasized it's not the only place where people can sell game keys, although it is the biggest. But if G2A were to shut down, selling game keys wouldn't disappear. Remember that one for later. It later added the indies who tweeted around this issue, including Ross, have not contacted G2A. Remember that for later too. Quote, We can assume the reason these indies wrote these posts was to gain media attention. (laughs) No, it wasn't. Unfortunately for G2A, they were incredibly successful. Their tweets caused an avalanche of articles. End quote. G2A reports that around 1 million games are sold every month on its marketplace. It also says only 1% of all its transactions are problematic, and all of these are handled by the support team contacting the seller. 1% of that is still 10,000. <laughs> Just FYI, yeah, that's still a lot. How these things are problematic? Is it that these things didn't actually work, or is it that they felt that the Keys not working, was... card transactions not being coming through, stuff like that. Which, yeah, we'll get into some stuff. Looking specifically at Descenders, the company cites Steam Spy's estimation of 32,000 sales since launch in the absence of official sales figures, and notes that since its full release in May, only five keys have been sold via G2A. 
A further 226 were sold while the game was still in early access, meaning 0.72% of the estimated 32,000 copies were sold through G2A's marketplace. There are a lot more stats and figures on the thing. Again, it's almost like they were trying to confuse the people about some stuff. Quote, what does this mean? Two things the company wrote. No More Robots is pretty good at handling the keys that they don't want available on the free market, and G2A has no significant impact on No More Robots' business. Do we want to stop here and talk? Let's, keep going? Let's go keep going. Part three, No More Robots petition demands G2A drop all indie games. This was the response. And I didn't actually write the reason why this petition is, is a thing. I mean, apart from all of the reasons I'm about to say and all the reasons cited earlier, but it's because they are basically what Micro said about the petition was like, if if uh, indie games only make up 8% of G2A's business, as they said it did, yeah. then they can take the hit and just stop selling indie games. <laughs> but anyway, the response was published online. The G2A response that I just went through was published online, triggering a detailed response from Rose via a Twitter thread. Rose asserts, Rose... <laughs> Rose asserts that G2A are lying about him not contacting them and explained why Normal Robots is, as G2A put it, pretty good at handling the keys they don't want available on the free market. Quote, that's because G2A exists. I've had to stop giving out keys so freely to potential press and influencers because G2A doesn't care about policing their site. Because of this pretty good handling, it means that we're far less inclined to get involved with things like, for example, a humble bundle, as we know all the keys will appear on G2A afterwards and tank our Steam sales from that point onwards. This is the issue with G2A. He later added, G2A do not care about the people who make games, no matter what that, no matter what spin they keep frothing out. Do not fall for it. Plenty of devs have tried to reason with them, but they are not to be reasoned with. End quote. Rose went on to say the fact that very few copies of Descenders, or any indie game for that matter, are sold through G2A, quote, isn't the fucking point. The problem is the perception of value. If someone sees our game at a low price on G2A, fuck, it's gone all the way out of the top, hold on. They'll be less inclined to buy it at full price, was the finishing part of that quote. Thank you. Uh, and as an industry, we are constantly fighting for players to perceive our games as valuable. If you see that Descenders is available for cheap somewhere dodgy, your brain will say, hmm, maybe I shouldn't buy it at full price. That day, it was in here somewhere. Da -da 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 -da. In its own statement, G2A does say, we believe that games can be cheaper and prides itself on offering competitive prices to its users. It also shared a screen grab of its internal systems, showing how few copies of Descenders have been sold, which Rose analyzed further. I.e., this was a terrible mistake on G2A's part. While G2A says only 226 copies have been sold via its marketplace, Rose notes that 85% of these were sold by just three people, and one person sold 45% alone. Said person sold 102 Steam keys on February 14th, 2018, when the game was only available on Steam and was discounted by 10% for its early access debut. Rose says he recalls seeing keys on G2A at the time for as low as $13.00, yet the cheapest official price was twenty two forty nine. Quote, 100 keys appearing from a single person, three people selling 85% of keys for a game on G2A. These are clearly flaggable, yet G2A did nothing. Roll over? <clears throat> or do you want to stop here? Yeah, let's go for the last bit because it is the last part. It is just a t a three tweets. Uh, and I titled it, G2A scores a spectacular role and call on Twitter via G2A, Alexander Slowinski and Mike Futter. So G2A got into it a bit with a bunch of people on Twitter. I don't know what the PR the person who ran the Twitter account was thinking when they even started this, but it got worse. So at one point, they were talking about the petition. And, and G2A.com's official Twitter account tweeted, Do you think that if G2A would close down tomorrow, the problem would be non-existent within a month? Which was quote tweeted by Alexander Slowinski under the, under the screen name Reverend Mother Slowinski. Digging the, uh, the screen name. Dearest community managers, I serve this tweet to you as the distilled perfection of something that could sell a thousand think pieces. <laughs> Which was then picked up by Mike Fair of GameDaily.biz, who I think we did a story from last week, who said, I'll say what Alexander is too polite to. 
This is a self-own, unforced error that reveals the depth of G2A's self-awareness that it survives on grift and theft. If not us, someone else is the mantra of organized crime. <laughs> but everyone else is doing it is, was one of the defenses. If you go back at their own <laughs> stuff they've done before, the saying it's like, do you think, because it was literally in the um, first article, well, yeah. Uh, uh, just that because response. everybody else is looting during a riot does not mean it is okay for you to go looting during a riot. Exactly. You will still get punished for this. Like, oh, but like, this is shady and shit and you should stop doing it. But if we yeah. just stop, these are the guys will do it. Yeah. So we want to make See, money too. Here's the thing. Um, when you're working on a till in a shop, or when you're doing um, like an online checkout or something, and you order say a hundred of something, there is this thing that can come up, which is fast as it goes. There's like you've ordered too many of this quantity. Yeah. For instance, if it's like like the the three per person, or if it's just a normal error where like the keyboard's being smacked, it's like, oh, surely the person didn't want a hundred and two Amazon Fire sticks, so it won't let it go through. Yet there is nothing on G2A which stops a seller from putting a hundred game keys on at once. On launch day. At like half the price of the actual game as yeah. of it being Surely available it to buy it. Yeah. Like that but right there is have... the proof that this is bullshit. Yeah. That it is incredibly easy to set up a thing to stop a seller who isn't authenticated as the actual like developer from putting up like large bunches of keys. I mean, I've never tried putting keys on G2A. Maybe you can only do them one at a time and someone has sat through and put 102 Steam keys on at once, like at, like one after another. Yeah. But still, it's still linked to the same oh, account and they know sake. it's linked to the same account. Sorry, you just saw an internet thing because it decided to open up on the main, on the, on the screen. Carry on, Keith, sorry. I'm just apologizing to people. Um, yeah, the wheels definitely have come off this podcast. Um, we've been doing it too long. We've got sloppy. <laughs> we're, we're, we're too but complacent. Yeah, it's like, my, my thing is, it's just like, a lot of people are like a qualified amount of saying that they know that people are getting these people. I mean, they from... called them, they called themselves out. <laughs> Like, that, this is the thing. Like, they called themselves out and saying, well, we know this is a problem, <laughs> and if we yeah, don't do it, somebody else will. Yeah, it's like, yeah, <laughs> actually, Pirate, well, the Pirate Bay, which is where people could go to find illegal downloads, and it's like, well, we're not actually selling this stuff. We're One just the marketplace for that. Yeah, I mean, that's the defense of, of torrent, like, torrent sites have been using for years, right? It's like, oh, well, you know, we're just the... We're not actually hosting any of these uh, torrents. Like, we're just the search engine, essentially. Yeah. I mean, how long did that go for Pirate Bay? I mean, they're still around as far as I'm, I'm aware. Me... I don't know. I've never actually used Pirate Bay. I just remember it from news articles about, like, arrests and legal cases. Yeah, it's a whole thing. We probably shouldn't get into it, even though part of this thing is about... Yeah, we're going to get, like, hacks just from the people from Mordhau. So. Yeah, I mean, the guys from Mordhau are going to gonna fucking take us out <laughs> to, to, to dinner. Um, sorry, I'm just looking some stuff up. It's all right. Uh, you, I mean, no, it's fine. You'll you'll appreciate what I'm doing in a second. Um, I'm trying to think. Judgment was a game that came out recently, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Very... Um, yes, Judgment. Just... No, there's no, it's, okay, there's no results. Okay, so actually, um, the one that, how about the one that's advertised on the fucking on the main page? Like I despise gray market. Like I used to use it. I I'm gonna be fully upfront and transparent. I used to use CDKeys.com like quite a bit when I first got into PC and gaming. I was like, fuck me, this website's amazing. Like it gets me like um, game game keys. Yeah. Um, like, and it gets me them like a lot cheaper. Like, even when I'm pre-ordering them, and there wasn't yeah. that part of my brain that clicked, as if to say this, <laughs> like, yeah, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. And it took one of an article like this, like talking about gray, oh, talking about gray, the gray market, to be like, yeah. actually, yeah, this is pretty shady. Fucking Jesus! Uh, it's called a gray market for the reason that you said it's shady because yeah. it's like black market is straight up illegal. 
a grey market is where you buy material where the provenance is dubious. Yeah. Um, so because, it's, it's very likely that you are buying stolen goods. Yeah, because there is, there can be legitimate people selling legitimate keys on sites like this. For example, yeah, for when I bought my Xbox One S, yeah. I got a code for, for whatever FIFA was out that year. Yeah. Like as part of the bundle that I bought for it, I didn't want it because I don't want yeah. FIFA. Now, I didn't sell it via G2A. I sold it to Tom, one of Tom's friends via Tom. Um, yeah. But I'd like considered like, oh, can I sell this somewhere? Because I don't need it. I don't want it. And if I can like sell it to somebody like for a bit cheaper than like they could buy the game, then that's fair enough. Yeah. So there are legitimate ways. Legit, there's legitimate users selling legitimate keys on G2A. However, the person that sold 102 <laughs> Descenders game keys on the day of launch, like, no. bought it for. like there's, there's people who like get stuff out of Humble Bundles, there's people who'll get, but there's people who'll scam like PR oh. companies and stuff, fake being a, a Twitch streamer or a YouTuber or a game reviewer and get free keys and then sell them on and 100% profit from what they sell it. The, the main one for a lot of indie devs is the credit card chargebacks, right? Like, if somebody's got, like, credit card details, they just buy a bunch of fucking keys and then yeah. flip, try and flip them. They only do it... Because G2A try to defend themselves by saying that, no, because the, these keys don't sell that fast. Like, yeah, Descenders doesn't sell that fast now, but when it came out, <laughs> you would have sold, like... You could get 100 get copies of the game, put it on G2A and they all go because people want to buy the brand new game and if they get it for half the price of this of Steam, they're going to do it. And then what happens is the person who's just been credit card forwarded sees all this stuff and goes, oh, fuck. And they get the thing stopped, they get the chargebacks and then who gets charged? Like, the devs are the ones that have to deal with the chargebacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the... Yeah, it's fucking nuts. G2A used to offer a thing on all of their transactions, which was four ninety nine for G2A Shield. It was basically insurance for your for your, your key. If that's not an admission that they know that a lot of these keys are dodgy, so so, uh, so many of these keys are dodgy. We have to offer, <laughs> which yeah. they offer for free now after they got called out for charging money for it. Yeah, but if you have to offer that. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure if, it was, if that would have been legal. Uh... <laughs> If you have to offer this service, like it, yeah. you know, you know, it's dodgy. But they did. Then they came out and said it. But there's a lot of Twitch streamers and YouTubers who do deals with G2A and CD Keys and other grey market resellers where they promote them. And if you click on the link that someone's got, it's like an affiliate link, and then you buy a game via that link, that streamer or YouTuber will get a percentage of the sale. I was offered one. I got emailed once by CD Keys. And luckily, thank God, it was when I'd educated myself on the situation. So I was informed enough to say, I don't want any part of this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want any part of this. Yeah. There's a lot of morally grey things um, around uh, game streaming. Um... There is. I, I get regular emails like offering me money to write articles. Yeah. Even though I haven't written an article for like two years. <laughs> like, yeah. I still get the regular emails where it's like, oh, yeah. on behalf of this company, do you know how much they offer for those articles? A hundred dollars to sell your soul. <laughs> for a hundred dollars to make a but top five. You get to sell your soul again and again and again. Top five games list of top five PC games. And then in the middle of it, you have to put some fucking casino fruit slot machine game. Yeah, in the middle of it, um, <laughs> but yeah, like grey market, bad. Don't do it. It's terrible for everyone involved, except scammers and the company that's making money, which is G in this case is G do it. Speaking of, as I said, not the only one. Other grey markets are King available. Kingwin, Sorry, CD keys. <laughs> Kingwin, C CD keys, uh, MMO. GA or whatever it's called. There's a bunch of them. Don't use any of them. Because they're fucking bullshit. So while you're talking, Keith, do you have anything more to add? No, not at the moment. So while you're talking, I looked up three of the, the most of re fairly recent releases on G2A and on their respective storefronts. Um, and I just closed one of the windows. So... 
that's why my internet thing popped up because I was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna open. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do some journalistic research. The so Super Mario Maker Two, right? Yeah. Fucking brilliant game. Absolutely fantastic. Fifty nine ninety nine on the eShop. To, to buy it digitally for Nintendo Switch, yeah. fifty nine ninety nine. Price on GDA, forty four eighty four. Uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, another fantastic game. Price on Steam, currently 10% off in the summer sale. It's £31.49. Price on G2A, £26.86. This one's a good one. F1 2019, brand new Formula 1 game. Yeah. It was advertised on G2A's front page. So that's how I was like, I'll click that because it's brand new. £44.99 uh, on... Yeah, it's the same edition. Sorry, there's two editions. Forty four ninety nine on Steam. Thirty four thirty seven on G two A. Came out. Hold on. On twenty seventh of June. Came out ten days ago. Ten pound off. There is no way someone bought a copy of F one twenty nineteen at full price. Oh my god. Sorry, I've just scrolled down. Thirty-four thirty-seven isn't. There's a key on here from a seller called Gameplay for twenty-six pounds and eighteen pence. Yeah, because the the people are underkill each other, so they will get to off. Yeah, but like on all the other ones, it's showing the the cheapest offer. But for some reason, on F one, it's it's not. So like, it's actually much cheaper. It's like twenty-six quid versus forty-five. It's like only twenty quid difference. They didn't buy a copy of, of F1 2019 and think, shit, I'll resell this because I don't want it. Because you wouldn't knock 20 quid off for a game that's just come out. No, I can't think of any bundle deals for that one either yet. No, I mean, F1 2019 is not going to be in any bundles because they want to sell the game at full price during its launch window. Because that's when they'll make the most full price sales. Yeah. Like, but if... But, what I actually did to find F1 2019 the Steam store page was I just typed it in to Google and the first thing that comes up on the Google ads, I'm going to fucking drag it across so you can see that I'm not lying, is the G2A link. In fact, Steam doesn't even come up. <laughs> like, I've, I've had to type in Steam <laughs> into the Google search bar. If I just type in F1 2019, it's G2A is first, CD Keys is second and third, Instant Gaming is fourth, and some place called Gamevo is fifth. These are all grey market resellers. Yeah. <laughs> if you were looking for to buy F1 2019 on PC, that's all you will see if you Google it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've just typed in F1 2019 game, and it's come up on like my search bar. And there is two ads for G2A.com. One showing the 26.19 price. The other one saying the 35.69. Yeah. Then it's Indie Keys, King Wing, and Instant Gaming in between them. And it's those like... are all game, grey market game key resellers. And I guarantee you yeah. none of those game keys are legit. Like I could have done. Like I got off, I got off, like, I've told, oh, do you want to request an F1 2019 key? And I was like, no, I'm not going to play it. Like, why would I? I don't, I don't, yeah. want, I don't want it. I'm not going to play it. It's fine. But if I was a shady individual, I could have been like, yeah, I'll take that. Boop. Sell it. Yeah. Fucking. There's ton. The, pro, the point is, there's tons of ways for people to scam free key, free game keys. And sell them on these websites. And G2A is defensive while well, other people do it. But that doesn't mean that you have to. <laughs> 20, 20 quid. 20 quid. That's fucking mental. Anyway, shall we move on? Yeah. Anything yeah, more to add to that? The grey market stuff is just. Ugh, fuck them. And speaking of fuck them. Story number three, Blizzard is hiring Hearthstone community managers, having laid the whole team off five months ago. This is from Ali Jones over at PC Games N, who writes, Earlier this week, a job listing for a Hearthstone community manager was posted on the developer's career page, careers page. 
The role asks for an experienced community manager passionate about the gaming industry, player communities, live events, and player relationships. Requirements include a bachelor's degree in a relevant field, as well as a minimum of three years experience with brand communication forums and social medias. Media. I don't know why I pluralized that. Following Blizzard's post, former employees, who we have not named, responded on Twitter. One ex-Hearthstone employee, who says that they were laid off along with their entire team back in February, said that the listing was shameful and referred to the community managers who are still looking for new employment in the wake of the layoffs. Another said that hundreds of former employees are still looking for work. Employees have suggested that the most recent listings are not the first examples of Blizzard hiring for roles that were axed earlier this year. Around 8% of the company lost their jobs as a result of Activision Blizzard's cutbacks, which came after the company announced record profits in Q4 last year. In the wake of the mass layoffs, the investors were warned that the cutbacks could hurt business due to decreased employee morale and a number of other factors. So, Bobby Kai goes on a phone call with his investors, board of investors, back in, was it February? Whenever it was. It was earlier this year. We did a podcast on it. You can go and find the date quite easily. Just from our YouTube channel. Goes on this phone call and he's like, yeah, we've had record revenue driven by Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, and uh, whatever remastered game they brought out. Spyro, I think it was. Yeah. Um, But we're going to lay off 8% of our employees. But don't worry. It's going to be in like non-game development areas because we want to really focus down on game development areas. So it's going to be like community managers, marketing. There was a team that worked on Destiny 2 and they didn't have Destiny 2 anymore, so they got rid of them. <laughs> and now, months later, <laughs> the people that they fired, they're having to rehire the positions. Yeah. It's not funny. Not Sorry. Yours, but not the new positions. It's not funny. It's fucking horse shit. And anybody who got laid... Like, I said it at the time. Anybody who got laid off because of this is just, like... They've just been shit all over by a company that's making record amounts of money. Like, that's to me, is just crazy. Brilliant. It's also capitalism. Yeah. Why like, my heart goes out at the people who got, who got laid off during that whole debacle. <laughs> they waited. Ah, it was February. It says right there. So they waited yeah. five months <laughs> to start rehiring people who they are probably going to pay less than the people that they let go because that's why businesses do this shit. And if those people, if they did for the chance re, they rehire someone, they don't get the like the year on year benefits and stuff you get for long term. Yeah, which aren't like large, but yeah, it it sucks. It really sucks. Um, I'm kind of surprised that they. I've, they look into like Hearthstone community managers because everything I've heard is kind of set, like said it's like been such a downturn in the amount of people on Hearthstone. I mean, I know it's still going forward, but yeah, but I mean, it's like it's like when WoW has a downturn, right? Like yeah. it's still a big game with a lot of people playing it. Like heart, like even though Hearthstone's having a downturn, I imagine there's still a lot of people playing the game. And also, they fired the entire fucking team, so they. <laughs> Like they have, they've got to like eventually like you got to think they got to hire people to, to replace that because it's not like people don't suddenly play Hearthstone anymore. Like yeah, I mean I do have this has come out at the same time as they've just announced the next expansion because obviously they do three expansions a year to fund their business model. I think Magic Gavin does that though, three sets a year. Um, so they've like released a new set and they're also looking for community managers. Yeah, like I mean whenever they release a new expansion, it's like. From what I've heard, and this this is from um, a different Blizzard game, yeah. <clears throat> but every time they release a new expansion, it's like it's hell for like community managers, yeah. community officers, customer support, no. and those are all the positions that have been downsized. So I'm gonna have to try and fill them before this something of heroes of old or something. Yeah, like it's like oh mm-hmm. shit. The, the people that we've got left aren't going to be able to handle the influx of traffic because when a new expansion comes out, people are going to download Hearthstone again. And also, there's going to be issues. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be things to work out, which is totally fine because that's what happens when you make an online game. Like Game yeah. development is hard, and it's a miracle that games work at all. But it's also going to create un- it's also going to create stress on non-game development positions, which are the ones that Activision Blizzard let go <laughs> Yeah. And now, shock horror, they need those people again. 
it's short sightedness. If a, if a triple A game developer, I've said this a million times, has an opportunity to to continue to make a really good amount of money steadily over the course of 10 years or make an obscene amount of money now and fuck themselves later they will choose the obscene amount of money <laughs> every single time and this is the kind of thing where we find oh yeah they've saved a bunch of money not paying these people for a few months and now we have to hire back yeah. for the positions <laughs> fuck them <laughs> as far as i'm concerned fuck them caramba activision blizzard uh, do you have anything more about? No. No, for something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> for one thing that repeats on a weekly basis. No, for something completely yeah. different. Epic Games are covering Shenmue 3 refund costs as Paradox CEO trashes Steam's revenue split. As you might imagine from what I just read, there's two stories. Here's the first. Part one, Epic will refund Shenmue 3 backers upset by games moved to Epic Games Store. This is from Charlie Hall over at Polygon. Who writes... Some of those who backed the campaign to make Shenmue 3 on Kickstarter were upset when developers moved the retail product from Valve's Steam storefront to the Epic Games Store. Today, those same backers were informed that even though they were promised a Steam code at launch, they won't be able to get one. Those upset by the debacle are being offered a full refund by Epic Games, not Shenmue 3 developer EaseNet. Quote, We had originally planned for PC distribution through Steam, EaseNet said. In response to backers who have requested Steam keys for their rewards, we discussed offering the keys on the day of release. However, coordination with the sales policies of the involved companies was untenable, and as a result, we are not able to make a day one distribution option for Steam keys available. End quote. The post goes on to offer either physical... Just accidentally added, like, some letters. The post goes on to offer either physical product or digital game codes for Shenmue 3 via the Epic Games Store or on PlayStation 4. If that's not sufficient, developers say they will give backers their money back. Some restrictions may apply, however. Those who backed the project at higher tiers, for instance, may not be able to get all of their money back. Any and all refunds will come courtesy of Epic Games, not Easner or Shenmue 3's current, developer, uh, current publisher, Deep Silver. Quote, Epic is funding the cost of all Kickstarter refunds resulting from Shenmue 3's move to the Epic Game Store, said Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney on Twitter, so that refunds won't reduce EaseNet's development funding. That's already a bold move by Epic, but Sweeney went further. Quote, When future games go Epic exclusive after offering crowdfunding rewards on other PC stores, we'll either coordinate with colleagues at the other stores to ensure key availability in advance, or guarantee refunds at announcement time. End quote. Whatever you think of Epic yeah. games, they're really not just talking the talk no. when they talk about where doing all of the things that they're doing are focused on the developers and making sure the developers get a good deal. They're, yeah. they're walking the walk on that as well. Because this they is great. Indeed. This is great for EaseNet. See, the first thing I noticed about this thing was like Paradox Interactive. And I was like, I know that studio. Yeah. You do. They have a few games. They have their own storefront on the website, but they, they have their own storefront, um, which normally gives you Steam keys. Uh, yeah. Well, par- uh... I backed on Kickstarter the Battletech game, and I got a Steam key reward that. I could have got a GOG key, I think. All right, cool. DRM free. I had more things on Steam, so I just went through Steam, but I paid the money to them through Kickstarter. Yeah. So if they start going like, Epic's like games all the time now. That's a big thing. Well, there's a few companies who have seemed to have pledged to do it, at least in the for now, in the foreseeable future. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is up on the for example. Um Ubisoft is basically doing it through but they do it through their own store as well. But no, it's it's really good because from what I've heard, right? And this is what I've heard, so take it with a grain of salt, but Shenmue 3, you remember when the, the facial animations and stuff were being criticised by Shenmue for the trailer that they put out last year, I want to say? Yeah. So they spent, they've spent the time polishing that up and fixing it, which is why the game got delayed again. Mm-hmm. Um, and they started running out of money. They started running out of development money, basically. And it seems like the Epic Games deal is to, f- is to make sure that EaseNet can make the game as good as it possibly can be. So the extra mm-hmm. money ensures the game will be the best it could possibly be 
where I'm saying where I'm coming from, where I'm saying Epic are walking the walk, not just talking the talk, is if he's not had to refund a bunch of people from Kickstarter, yeah. that would have been bad for them, and they might not have been able to use that money to even improve the game. So Epic could have just come out and said, "We got you, it's fine." Yeah. I get you, babe. It probably cost them like a day's worth of Fortnite revenue. Yeah. Um, but then they've gone even um, further than that, and it's been like, if any game comes over from from Kickstarter, because games that were Kickstarted like a, even a year, two years, three years ago were like Steam Key, obviously, because no other storefront exists. Yeah. So if they then sign deals to come on to Epic, and Epic's just gone, we got them too. <laughs> we'll figure it out either to get you Steam keys like you were promised, or if you're really dead set on not having them, we'll just refund you. We'll refund you. So the developer can put the money back into developing their game, which is exactly what Epic have been talking about for months now. So, you know, fucking good on them. Because they're backing up the shit that they're saying. Um, I mean, eventually they're going to run out of like the Fortnite money. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just seeing this like giant gavel like of like legal things coming in the future but yeah um it's just like steam hasn't like i know i made a prediction that steam would like double down on its policy um regarding like games and stuff yeah but i didn't expect them to do like nothing yes this one is gonna have to go to the council because <laughs> it's like... the council of wells um, the council is basically like everybody months. who, except the person who predicted the thing. Yeah, like nine or ten months have gone by and Steam hasn't really done anything. Apart oh. from what, like, one thing of going, this really isn't fair. This is unfair. And in fairness to Steam, that was the one time where it was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I said as much last week. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This is bullshit. Yeah, that was it. That's so like... I mean, this isn't great, but at the same time, it's like, I don't see how Epic Games or Easenet could have done anything more than they're doing. Like, Deep Silver have weirdly been compl- the publisher who probably like inked this deal to get them the funding have said nothing. <laughs> like, I'm, holy! I'm like a, let's not draw attention to this, and then it's just like part of. The- <laughs> Yeah. Oh my One more thing. <laughs> Before you move this on to the power I want to <coughs> sit down and talk to you a moment about their 70 30 revenue split and why it's outrageous. And then they're like, don't be silver, just like. Yeah, I'm going to move on to the paradox. I just wanted to point out one thing about Shemu 3. So, you know, the, the physical yeah. copies of, on PC. Yeah. So you get a box of Shemu 3 and you get a, a disc inside. Yeah. So people were expecting a code, but it was a nice, a fancy box and a code. Yeah. But you don't get a code. You get a disc inside the inside the box. Guess what's yeah. on the disc? A code. The Epic Game Store launcher. <laughs> that's all that's on the disc. You put it in, it installs Epic Games. <laughs> and then you download Shemmy. I was like, damn, that's cold. I remember Metal Gear 5 did the same thing. They put out a, disc, a fancy box and you got a disc and you put it in and it was Steam. It was on the disc. Anyway, part two, because again, <laughs> copied part one and then didn't change it. Paradox Interactive, quote, <laughs> the 70-30 revenue split is outrageous, end quote. This is from Matthew Handaran over at GamesIndustry.biz who writes, speaking as part of a panel at Game Lab last week, which was hosted by GamesIndustry.biz, as Wester, I cut out the first part of the story to get into the meat of it. Now I don't know who Wester is, but I'm guessing he's the CEO of Paradox Interactive. Anyway, Wester did not mince his words when talking about the deal that the industry's biggest distribution platforms offer to developers. Quote, I think the 70-30 revenue split is outrageous, he said. I think the platform holders are taking too much money. Everyone in the press here, just quote me on that. And they did. <laughs> End quote. Steam takes 30% revenue from the majority of games on its platform, just like other platforms operated by Microsoft, Sony, Apple, and others. However, Wester suggested that the 70-30 split was based on a model established by Warner Brothers in the 70s for the distribution of films on boxed VHS tapes. Quote, that was physical. It cost a lot of money. 
This doesn't cost anything, so Epic has done a great job for the oil industry because you get 88%. Fantastic move. Thank you very much. End quote. Frederick Cuesta is DC current CEO <laughs> of Paradox. Current CEO of Paradox. Thank you very much, Keith. Keep me honest. I said at the beginning of the podcast, you're awesome and you are awesome. Didn't mince his words. He no. did not mince his words. He just said what I imagine a lot of developers or publishers or CEOs have wanted to say <laughs> for yeah. months now. I mean, I'm assuming people have been sitting on the fence for to see how like Epic Games got. But after the, yeah, it, it's at this point where like, as I said, we're like nine months or so on. From like epic stores being a thing um, and it was the game I awards so it was the beginning of december right so it was like seven months just over because mm. what, so, what it gets was hades and that yeah. was when it was revealed sorry go on but yeah so seven eight months People are like using it now it's getting like a lot of games like which are exclusive to so I think CEOs are less bothered or less worried about alienating from Steam, so they'll still get that um, nicer split because some of Paradox's games are going to be in that split where they earn a certain amount of games on Steam that they get a high percentage of the money because of mem- as a member on Steam, you're, they change it to you now tiered. So the more games you sell, the more money you get. Yeah, but the higher percentage of the money you get back. The threshold of of lowering the percentage is like astronomical. If I remember correctly, yeah. it lowers it, it lowers it down. And somebody can tweet me or write a comment if I'm wrong on this, but it's like fifty yeah. million dollars of revenue to get the twenty percent instead of the thirty percent. Oh no, yeah, the twenty percent instead of the thirty percent. But even that's not. 88, 12. <laughs> like, so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? Like, even if you're in, even if your game makes hundreds of millions of dollars, you're still going to want to choose Epic. Be- For all sales between 10 million and 50 million, Epic goes to 25%. So it's 50 to 20. Every sale after 50 million, Steam will take the Like, how many 20%. developers make $50 million on Steam? How many developers even make 10? Like it can't be a that that's got to be an exclusive club, <laughs> like because that's a lot of money to make. Yeah, I don't know, even Paradox is Paradox definitely isn't making fifty mil on a game. I doubt. Yeah. Like that's reserved for things like GTA and PUBG and stuff like that. I would imagine. Um, yeah. Yeah, they take thirty percent of all games up to ten million. Yeah. It's 70-30, that's the standard. Thank you, absolute. Google and The Verge. Thanks, Verge. Um, yeah, it's like, why wouldn't you take this? Why wouldn't you take the split? The, what, what's probably got a lot of people interested in coming over to Epic Games are the sales. Because Metro Exodus reported it had a massive boost in sales despite the backlash. Satisfactory yeah. came out and sold half a million copies on Epic Games. It's because people can see the fucking games. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a curated storefront. Like, yeah, I mean, an asset flipper isn't going to get on the Epic game. Not a chance. Like, no. Like, so that reduces. I don't know how many asset flipping games come out every day. Honestly, what we've complained about in the past. And I mean, I'm sure, yeah, the curated storefront is. means you won't find a lot of, like, really obscure indie games and stuff that you may really love. Yeah. But it does make finding certain indie games, which people think that you'll really love, like hate anything by Supergiant. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to find those games. And they're good games, people. I mean, yesterday, 15 games came out on Steam. Bear in mind, yesterday. Yesterday for us, sorry. It was on Saturday. On Saturday... So on a day that, you know, not as many games are going to be released because it's a weekend. 15 games came out on Steam. But 15 games are in the new releases tab, but only one, two, three, four, five of them are actually out. <laughs> like the other ones you can't buy. Oh, look, an anime visual level. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's like, look, I remember the old days of Steam when it was like, it was a badge of honor just to get on there. Like if you got your game on Steam... It was yeah. a big deal. 
and then obviously the floodgates opened with green light and then they just yeah. broke that's the something. lever off. That's something I'm hoping doesn't happen with Epic, that they don't get to that point as well. Where it's like, oh yeah, well, curated moderation. Well, all they need is, is, is a team to curate the games. They can, like Steam could have relaxed like their submission guideline, whatever, like t- yeah. so that more games could get, more quality games could get in. All it would have taken is, is a curation team. But instead, they went in a completely different direction and doubled down on being a sewer pipe. <laughs> Minor reckoning because they said there was a problem with Greenlight being gamed. By yeah, yeah, I'm not talking about gaming. Not curated by people, curated like curated by the gamers or the fans or the Steam users. I'm talking about if they had an internal team. Yeah, that went because through that was the problem. It was it was outsourced curation and it was just. It was horrible. It was, a, it was all user, wasn't it? It was, it was users, users reporting on stuff. And the first, when it opened, yeah. and it was the first thing, and I think like a dozen games got through. Yeah. It was so cool. Like once they added the the thing where you had to, you know, pay money to get on, so everybody wasn't just putting Half Life Three on Greenlight. Yeah. Um, it was really cool. Like you would go through, I would go through my queue, and I'd be like, "There's there's there's a lot of really cool games on here." Yeah, and I voted for a bunch of them, and I followed the development, and some of them still aren't out yet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then it, it just got progressively worse, and then it would be like the next batch of Steam Greenlight, and it's like a hundred games of Copeland's, like, and none of them are. Maybe it's like one percent of them are of a quality, like a decent quality. And like, I'm all for anyone making a game as long as you're not being hateful or hurting other people. Make a game. But there are other platforms, open platforms, like where people who want to experience those types of experiences can go and buy them. I'm not being like Steam has just opened the floodgates to the point where it's completely useless for serious indie developers. And I mean, you even, need to know about the game before you go on Steam. Yeah, you need to know that a game is coming. Go on Steam and find the game. Yeah, hundred percent. Otherwise, you're just not going to find it. I mean, we've already done the live thing where we've proven that the freaking Discovery Q's balked. Yeah. Because we both apparently are on the same level for buying football managers. <coughs> there was a bunch of games on there that the same for both of us, despite the fact that we have very different tastes in games. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and even going back to the 70-30 revenue split, it's like the 30%, sometimes that's the entire profit margin of a game for an indie developer yeah. on Steam. So if they can get on Epic Games and get an 8 year 12 it means they can actually make money. So that's why you're getting people like Paradox Interactive CEO saying, yeah, it's fucking outrageous. Like, yeah, I know it's not free for them to put it. They've got servers and stuff, but, you know, they're not yeah. printing discs and making cases and sending them physical copies to people. But you can lower that. Epic of proof that you can lower that split. Yeah. And they proved by putting down the 12%, which is obviously what they consider to be the right amount of money to charge for those servers. Yeah. And that service. And that service. Because at the end of the day, they are just a storefront. They're not. They're not a platform like Xbox, like PlayStation, like Nintendo. It's just a storefront <laughs> with some pretty decent features, like friends lists for more online multiplayer gaming and stuff. But yeah. anyway, shall we? The final news story. Let's have a laugh. Number five. EA struggles with the perception that quote we're just a bunch of bad guys. End quote. This is from Eddie Makucha over at Gamespot, who writes. A publicly traded company with thousands of employees around the world, EA is among the world's largest, oldest, and most established gaming publishers. EA's EVP of Strategic Growth, Matt Bilby, explained to GI.biz that when EA makes mistakes, these issues are blown out due to part of the company's size and scale. Quote, 25 years at EA and I still struggle with the external perception that we're just a bunch of bad guys. We love making and playing games. Unfortunately, when we make mistakes on games, the world knows about it because of because it's of a size and scale, end quote. And that's the only reason. He goes on to talk about EA Originals. And they're trying to change the perception of EA by finding these indie games and being like, yeah, look at this. <laughs> no, don't I mean, look at that behind, <laughs> behind me. <laughs> look at this. He has some points here. And some of them are valid. He does. 
the um the fact that um they're a big company means that more people will hear about it when they make mistakes. That's perfectly 100%. true. Valid. Um they do honestly make mistakes. Um they do. Sometimes we think what on earth are they thinking? Titanfall 2's launch date being the most prime example where they put it sandwiched between two of the biggest first-person shooter games, which were the same genre. One of which... Um, one of which they owned as well. <laughs> in an attempt to take sales away from their competitors. <coughs> Call of Duty, which, which they were never going to do, because Call of Duty is Call of Duty. It has a built-in fan base <laughs> of people who are it never was... going to buy. They were never going to not... Like, the people who bought Titanfall 2 and Battlefield... Yeah. One, that was it. It was Battlefield yeah. One, right? Right. The people who bought the, one, those two games who were COD fans, yeah, one hundred percent bought COD as well. Yeah, <laughs> like they weren't going to pinch sales off of, no, off of COD. And you can tell they learned that lesson because last year they pushed Battlefield Five away from COD. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, that's it. And I hundred percent believe that they love making games. And playing games. Of course, yeah. Who doesn't? Yeah. I, love, I love playing games. But... <laughs> Best part of this job. There's always that thing where people are like, oh yeah, like big giant faceless corporations. Are, it, it's a trope. It, from Blade Runner, the, yeah. like, all of them. Um, to whatever that, like Outer Worlds is it that's just coming out? The Outer Worlds. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk um, about that next week. Um, yeah. Probably. The... Right, here's, one, here's, here's my one devil's advocate moment from yeah. from this article so he says you know blah 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 i struggle with the external perceptions that we're just a bunch of bad guys okay matt real talk here for a second yeah. like i know i don't claim to speak for the entire gaming community i yeah. claim to speak but in this in this regard i'm probably speaking for the rational element of the gaming community and say nobody thinks he is a bunch of bad guys the game yeah. developers you work at your, your development studios. We love those guys. Yeah. Respawn, your EA original stuff. Joseph Farris is a fucking cult yeah. icon. Yeah. The, the people who are the bad guys, the people who are viewed as the bad guys by the gaming community at large are the executives who make decisions that are just mind-boggling to us. Like, oh, I don't know. Star Wars Battlefront 2's loot boxes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, it's very easy to make. To, to, to... We do approve every EA play press conference. We do, like, just make a thing about, like, I was like, we're going to fall asleep here because we don't really support these, like, we don't, we don't really get into these, like, sports, sports, sports games. Sports, sports. Which was easy this year because they didn't actually have a press conference. Yeah, we just the live we watched um, Star Wars, we watched Apex, and then we pieced the fuck out. Yeah, which was fine. I mean, that's okay. We yeah, make was... jokes um, about some of the bizarre things you do. Um, Kid like Regs. Comparing Kid like, yeah, comparing <laughs> the box to Kid Regs, calling them surprise, surprise mechanics. mechanics. People do these, um, and people have serious ethical. Like comms with like, are we using loot boxes and stuff in your games? P Frolman team, for example. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my team. Don't don't even think people are saying you like evil and stuff. But <laughs> I mean, they did win worst corporation in America like a couple of years running, which is uh, also some. It's funny, kind of, yeah. but it's also not true in the slightest. <laughs> Like, yeah. even I can understand, even even I can recognize that there are way more evil corporations in America than yeah. E fucking A. But um, no, EA like, like it's if Matt Bilby is telling the truth, and he struggles with that perception, you know, you're an e EVP, which as far as I know stands for electronic voice phenomenon, and it's a way of <laughs> yeah, ghosts talking. But sure, like that means you're higher up at the company. Do something about it. Change <laughs> the attitude of the people who are making the decisions. And I guarantee you will eventually win over a lot of people. If you stop I mean, closing studios, if you stop forcing studios to work crunch, if you do a bunch of other stuff, your EA original stuff, I've said for years, whatever else I'll say about EA, I will always back, I will always be like, 
happy that they're doing this thing, this EA Originals thing, because they're giving a voice and a, and a platform to people who otherwise wouldn't get it. That's great. I love that. More of that, please. That's the kind of thing you need to be focusing on. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you keep saying that everyone like thinks an evil company, find out what you think, what, what these people are thinking that you do, which is bad, and what you're thinking people are doing is good, and then work off that feedback. Yeah, do the and good what, thing. A lot of the stuff I'm going to find is like, yeah, people will be annoyed by like, the closing of um, development studios, but more of them are going to be focused on the fact that they have these gambling mechanics in your games and just keep saying, no, no, they're not gambling, they're not gambling, they're not gambling, isn't going to make people feel better about them. They already have a negative opinion about this yeah. surprise mechanic that you keep putting in more and more games. And maybe you should look at how you do this going forward instead of trying to defend it all the time because when you get really defensive it just gets people's backs up 100 percent, especially when you're stretching the truth or you're outright lying about things like you don't call loot boxes surprise mechanics we know you don't nobody does <laughs> like you said it because you were trying to you were trying to, to get one over exactly. on an mp's committee that didn't know a goddamn thing about what they were talking about and that's verifiable. Like we read the excerpts from the transcripts of the thing. We know that they didn't know anything about what the, they were actually discussing. And so it was easy to get one over on them. But the problem is everybody else was listening too. <laughs> and we understand that. Yeah, you call them loot boxes. You called them loot boxes a couple of months ago for a free bit of positive PR when you were revealing Star Wars, uh, <laughs> Jedi. Um, like constructive criticism. Like, here's things that you're doing that I are, are really positive and I really enjoy. Whatever you're doing with Respawn, where they're taking the time to, to develop Apex Legends and not burning out and doing lots of crunch like the guys on Fortnite, that's good. Do more of that. EA Originals, that's good. Do more stuff like that. You need to get a grip <coughs> on your development studios, especially Bioware, because they need to stop being in this perpetual cycle of crunch. Stop trying to lie to people about loot boxes. <laughs> We'd probably respect you a bit more if you were just honest about mm. about it. Just say it. it makes us a fucking megaton of money. <laughs> like, so no, we're not going to take it out. <clears throat> Fine. I won't like it, but I'll respect you more. I'll, I don't respect you when you say things like, we don't call them loot boxes, we call them surprise mechanics. They're fun, like Kinder Eggs. Like, I'm not going to respect you when you say that. We've we got, sometimes when they do these stupid things, they do get nice Penny Arcade comic memes, which are quite I mean, funny, we get but, amazing yeah. memes out of, it, out of it when you say it. But, yeah, you, Keith, are absolutely correct. If they, if, if you're genuinely serious about wanting to change your perception, it won't be easy. It won't happen overnight. But if you focus on the things that people like about the things that you're doing and yeah. try to stop doing... Some of the stuff that people don't like, yeah. more and more people will be won over. <laughs> I thought my manager like, keeps startling us is that people are more likely to share negative like opinions about something than they are positive when it comes to like consumer like stuff and that. So yeah, your EA original is wonderful, and it's not getting as much of a soapbox as the negative things that you're doing. But that's just the way humanity works. And also, and you don't fine. give it a stage at E3. So you're part of the problem in that regard. And you didn't have a stage at E3 this year. <laughs> you didn't promote it at E3. So less people are talking about it because you didn't promote it. <laughs> like, so yeah, sometimes like, yeah, 100% people will always try, people will always veer towards negativity. Like we did it on this podcast and on this channel for a little while. I think we focused on negativity like quite hard. And now I think... Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to make a conscious effort to sort of turn it around. Yeah, like, like the last story we talk about each week is meant to be funny. And the thing is, you put on this thing about EA struggling with perception as the bad guy. It's the funny story this week, and I took it in a completely different no, I mean, direction. it is funny. It is like, well, stop being bad guys. They're problem solved. Like, no, it is like, we. that was all, that was the old format when we used to do six stories. The sixth one was always just a dumb story about like the Fortnite fan event in Norwich. <sighs> Uh, but we don't do that anymore because it was causing the shot to run considerably longer than we wanted. No, I'm really happy with the discussion that we got out of this. Like, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, Ian needs to just listen to people who aren't its investors and shareholders. And like, 
they'll probably even make more money if they do like good things that people like games out keith take it away games out this week well i did just want to check the spelling on the second one just to make sure you hadn't misspelled it Semran kagara peach ball peach ball i wasn't sure it was going to be peach ball no peach peach slash it's a naming convention with Semran kagara yeah, no problem so as you may have already figured out <laughs> Seven Kagura Peach Ball is coming out on the Switch on July 9th. Also coming out on July 9th on PS4, Xbox One, and Switch is Bear With Me. And then we've got, this is the one Amy really wants me to see, see me try and pronounce, on the PSVR, Serenator? Uh, Sirento. Sirento. Fair enough. On the 10th, we have Dr. Mario World on Android and iOS. Not often we get that like sort of thing appearing on the uh, list. It's, oh, yeah. it's a Nintendo game. Oh, wow. I was like, I'll keep it on the list yeah. then we've got on the 11th coming out we have two games the first being blazing chrome on pc ps4 xbox one and switch and then we have sky children of the light on ios and finally we have dragon quest builders 2 on ps4 and switch if you didn't already know amy appears to be a fan of the series as do a lot of people dragon quest builders man it was such a surprise to me when it came out like well, i played it first at egx whatever the year it was it came out and i'll be honest it was tucked away next to uh, something behind something behind this big wall and it had this little booth with four seats on it and it was sunday afternoon so i'd been there for four like this was my fourth day at the show my legs were killing i needed to sit down there was a free booth i sat down and then i was like well it'd be rude not to play the game and i played it for 45 minutes and i was like fuck this is actually really cool and then i was like i got home it came out not that long after i got it i played 20 hours easily i was like fuck this is really good <laughs> and then the second one's coming out this fucking week people <laughs> i can't wait um i don't know what half of the games on this list actually are sky children of the light could be interesting because it's made by the that game company. They made uh, Floor, Flower, and something else. Do you know what it reminds me of? The lyrics to one of the songs in Alan Wake. <laughs> by, by the lady of, of the light. <laughs> that we just both yeah. butchered the, the tune there, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Alan Wake, did you hear? Did you hear? Did you hear the news about Alan Wake? This news. Remedy Entertainment have the publishing rights back. Controls out next month, so yeah, they've got some free. I'm looking to get control, not for any reason to do Alan Wake though. I'm wanting to get control. Control looks <laughs> awesome in its own right. No, what I meant was what I meant, kind of think it was. At the very least, there'll be a PS4 remaster of Alan Wake. They remaster it <laughs> because it was never on PlayStation. But then. I'll wait too. Dare I say it? You yeah, have many times. And yeah, on Twitter. Vocally. But now there's hope. And I remember they... the gift because I've been replying to most of your tweets with gifts lately. Was from Halo 3, one of the many, which was word so easy. But that's the thing, Keith, it is easy now. <laughs> it is that easy. Remedy did entertainment. Have, was it not taken down from Steam for a little while because they didn't have the music rights anymore? Yeah. Yeah, the license and on the music, and then it came back up. It's like, that's the thing when you put licensed music in your games, it's like, you've got to make sure you keep the licenses current, otherwise the games will disappear because licensing is Yeah. Dumb. Also, never put movie dialogue into your game because then it makes it completely unusable. Hello, Lego! <laughs> Hi, Lego. But here's the thing. They own the publishing rights to Alan, the Alan Wake franchise. So they can make a sequel now. It's not dependent on whether Microsoft wants them to. Yeah. So I'm hopeful. The thing is, that studio does appear to make a lot of sort of like one-off games and not do come back and do sequels. A lot of that probably, well, a lot, I think a lot of that has to do with Microsoft wanting to, like with, because they're in Alan Wake and it, to be fair, didn't sell well. That's what happens when you release your game on the same day as Red Dead Redemption. Um, <laughs> it, but like, it, it was one of those slow burning cult 
classic kind of things yeah. where it, like i think we were doing a story a couple of years ago where it came out on pc and now it's up to like four or five million sales um when it eventually came to pc i know i bought it again but the where was i going <laughs> Shit, I forgot what the point was. Yeah, it's all the, the point push. was. Oh yeah, Quantum Break. Was... They made Quantum Break because Microsoft was doing the whole TV push, like the all-in-one media center push. So they had like, here's a get, here's a game that's also a TV show, <laughs> which Alan Mike would have been perfect for, but I guess they wanted a new IP to launch with the Xbox One, even though it didn't yeah, end up I launching really with the didn't Xbox like Quantum Break. One. I thought it was fine. I enjoyed it. Like I haven't played a bad Remedy game, um, but. Nah, I thought it was pretty cool, but the like, yeah, they make one-off games, but it's because Quantum Break didn't Alan Wake didn't sell well, so they what Microsoft got them to make a new game, and then they were like, well, Quantum Break didn't sell well, so we don't want a new Quantum Break. So I remember they were just like, well, fuck you, and then they went off to five or five games, and we're like, do you want to play it? Do you want our next game? It's called Control, and then five, I'm I'm guessing the talent spotter or 505 saw called control and was like holy fuck this is amazing hell yeah i want this <laughs> i haven't seen as much marketing for it so i don't have that kind of is this going to turn like like, like tomb raid but yeah welcome to the fifth <laughs> thing we were discussing on this on this podcast i, th- I think it'll be fine um i'm hoping it will be it, it won't really blow up good I don't think it'll blow up or like set the world on fire, but I think it'll be fine because it's got the PlayStation branding. Share yeah, Tomb Raider didn't have. Like you probably would have heard a lot more about it if the PlayStation had been at E3, because they would have showcased part of the gameplay demo. But obviously they weren't there. It might turn up in a state of play between now and August. It's only you've got to do one of those of them very soon. Given that they've been quiet for like June. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to do it for episode 165 of the Words About Games cast. You got a whole extra discussion out of us about Alan Wake and Remedy Entertainment. Buy Control and it comes out. It, it looks, looks really phenomenal. Cool. Go on. Go also, it looks in... like someone stayed up late and watched way too much X Files. Yeah. Go type in uh, Control Gameplay on YouTube. Um, there's like a 18 minute demo you can watch from E3, which will show you what the game looks like. It looks really cool. Um, but that's gonna do it. Nothing more to talk about. Plenty more we could talk about, but we're not gonna. See you back, Keith. Bye bye.